Welcome to Yoga with Tracy. Today we have a 20 minute yin yoga practice as we unwind and target the deepest tissues of the body. No props required, but you might like to grab a blanket and a bolster or cushion to help soften some of the postures. And when you're ready, meet me on the mat. Hi, I'm Tracy. Let's begin today's practice kneeling, facing the short edge of our mat, rolling the shoulders back and down, Rest the hands on your thighs as we begin to slow our breaths and quieten down our busy minds. Coming forwards onto your hands and knees, curling your toes under and taking your seat back towards your heels. In your own time, folding forwards Lowering your upper body onto your thighs, placing your forehead on the mat, arms stretched forwards, or you can rest your forehead on stacked hands. If you find it uncomfortable for the knees, try placing a folded blanket under the knees for additional support. Maintaining a slow breath, feel the breath drawing into the back of the body with every inhale. And on each exhale, releasing through the abdomen. In this variation of child's pose, with the toes curled under, we can open the toes and feet and gain a gentle stretch to our lower backs to release the tightness and discomfort in this area, which we can all experience in our daily lives. We will be holding each yin posture for around three minutes today. If the toe stretch becomes too intense, uncurl the toes, placing the top of the feet flat on the mat, coming back into a softer version of child's pose. Allow your body to surrender into the pose as the lower back gently rises with each inhale and fall in with each exhale. We can all find it difficult to switch off. So if you notice your attention is not on the breath, gently guide it back. Long, slow inhalations and long, slow exhalations. Allow yourself to turn inwards and nurture the calm, quiet center within. Using your hands to push the floor away as you gradually come back up, uncurling your toes and sitting on your heels. Counterposing with an ankle stretch, leaning back on your hands, lifting your heart up towards the sky and coming into a very gentle back bend as you lift your knees off the floor. Ying is all about working within your own range of limits and abilities. So if you find this is too intense, just lower the knees or come back into kneeling, resting your palms on your thighs. Each of these variations will still give you a great ankle stretch. Hold in for three more slow breaths.
lowering in your knees, coming upright and taking your seat to one side, stretching both legs out in front of you. Our next posture is called caterpillar. If your hamstrings are tight, you might like to place a bolster or blanket under the knees. Otherwise, keep the legs straight. Begin to fold forwards over the legs as the back rounds. Unless you have any lower back disorders, do not allow the spine to round. Just try and keep the back as neutral as you can. Find your edge and let your body slowly open up. You'll notice as we continue to hold this posture, how gravity pulls us towards the floor. If your neck begins to feel strained by the weight of the head, you might like to try placing your elbows on your thighs and supporting your head in your hands. Some people might think yin is easy as we're just holding these postures for a few minutes, but although it sounds simple, it's still challenging. As we are working deeply into our body with those passive, longer held postures, putting pressure on those connective tissues, leading to healthier joints, ligaments, bones, and the deep fascia networks of the body. It's not only our muscles that need to be exercised. The health of our connective tissues is just important as it provides support and protection throughout our bodies. Using your hands to slowly push yourself up. Be mindful of your spine and lower back. Moving into a seated twist, begin sitting cross-legged, sitting up nice and tall. Inhaling, raising your arms up and over your head. Exhaling, as you gently twist your torso to the right, placing your right hand behind you and your left hand on your outer right knee. Be still and taking a slow, steady breath. On your next exhale, coming back to centre. Inhaling, raising the hands up above your head and exhaling over to the left. Exhaling back to center. Moving into a posture called seal. Coming forwards onto your hands and knees. Walking your legs back. As you come to lie down on your belly. Raising up onto your forearms. Feet a comfortable distance from each other. 
bring your palms flat on the floor as you lift up and straighten the arms. If you're finding the compression in the sacral lumbar spine too intense, slide the hands forwards to lower the chest. You can take the arms out wider, or you can come back down into sphinx, resting on your forearms. Still so is a deep back bend, or you can tone the spine, and the stomach can also receive a lovely stretch. Find your edge and come into stillness. Remember to listen to your body. Direction is far more important than distance. If you feel any pain or pinching, back out of the posture. Once you've found your appropriate depth, avoid fidgeting or moving around as best you can in order to release into the pose. In your own time, gradually lower your chest to the floor. Bend in your elbows so you can stack your hands and rest your forehead on top. Rest in here for a few moments. Let your hips rock side to side. Coming back into stillness. Rolling over onto your back. Keep your knees bent, feet flat on the floor as you get your back comfortable. Our next posture, called reclined butterfly, will help with our hip mobility and also stretching the inner thighs and hamstrings. Taking your arms out to the side in a cactus shape. Legs and feet together. Dropping your knees out to the sides with the soles of feet touching as you make a diamond shape with the legs. No pushing or forcing. Allow gravity to open up those hips. If you find this gets too intense, place some cushions under your knees for support and this will stop you from overstretching. In this variation of reclined butterfly, allow your body to open up. It's both a great chest and hip opener. Let your body release any held tension as you continue to invite your body to slow down and unwind. Maintaining that smooth, steady breath 
in and out through the nose. Lowering your arms and placing your hands on the outside of your thighs and gently guiding your knees back up. Taking your feet as wide as the mat, reaching your arms overhead, keeping these parallel, dropping both knees over to the right so we can achieve a gentle twist as we keep the upper and mid back grounded. Enjoy that stretch as we work into the hips and lower back. Hold in for three more slow breaths. Inhaling as you raise the knees and exhaling over to the other side. Inhaling as you slowly draw the knees back up. Straighten the legs along the mat for a full body stretch from your fingers to toes. Gorgeous way to stretch those worked joints and deep tissues. Let's finish today's practice in Shavasana for a couple of minutes. Legs about hip width, letting the feet drop out to the sides. Arms alongside the body, but slightly away from the torso. Turn the palms to face upwards and let the fingers softly curl in. Shoulder blades tucked into your back for support. And closing your eyes, 
as you relax your whole body. Enjoy these next few minutes of stillness and quietness. bringing some movement back into the body, wiggling the toes, wiggling your fingers, stretching your arms overhead for one last full body stretch. Lowering your arms and resting your palms on your chest. Thank you for joining me in today's practice. Softly opening the eyes, and whispering namaste. If you enjoyed today's practice, don't forget to hit the like button below. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. It's all free. I put out new videos on a regular basis. And it's also a great way to help support free yoga on the internet.